What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own Discord bot without having any coding knowledge at all. And it's completely free. The first thing you have to do is go over to this website called disfuse.xyz. The link will also be in the description. This website allows you to create code very easily for your Discord bot using scratch style block coding. First, click on the dashboard button. You will be asked to authorize using your Discord account. This will allow Disfuse to see your Discord username and profile picture. After clicking authorize, you will be taken to your dashboard, which will show all your projects. On the sidebar, you can click the explore tab to see other people's public projects and the workshop page allows you to install custom plugins to use blocks that other people created. To create a project, click the New Project button in the Projects page. Enter any name for your project, and you can also enter a description if you want. Next, select whether you want your project to be public or private. Public projects can be seen by anyone and will appear on the Explore page, while private projects can only be accessed by you and people you invite. Once you create your project, it will ask you to name your first workspace. I will name mine main. After you create a workspace, you will be taken to the first workspace of your project. This is where you can use blocks to create the code for your bot. You can create more workspaces within a single project to organize your blocks and commands. In the top right corner, you can also click the invite button to invite other Disfuse users to work together on your project along with you at the same time. But before we start making the commands, we need to actually create a user for our bot on Discord. To do this, click the second link in the description, which will take you to the Discord Developer Portal website. Click New Application in the top right corner and enter a name for your bot. You can ignore the team dropdown. Once you create the application, you can upload a profile picture and enter a description if you would like. Then, click the bot category in the sidebar, scroll down, and make sure all three intents options are enabled presence intent, server members intent, and message content intent. Your bot will not work unless all of these are enabled. Next, scroll back up and copy your bot token, or click reset token if it does not show it. Make sure to copy the token immediately because it will not be shown to you again. This token is like a password for your Discord bot, so you should not show it to anyone besides other people who are working on your bot. Anyone with this token will be able to log into your Discord bot. Next, we need to generate an invite link for our bot. Go over to the OAuth2 category, click the bot and applications.command scope, then select the permissions your bot requires. Then scroll down and copy the generated URL. You can then paste this URL in your browser to add the bot to any of your servers. Then we can go back to our project on Disfuse, go into the main category and drag this block into the workspace. This block is required for all bots because it allows the code to log into your bot using the token. Now, if your project is private, you can directly enter your token into the text box in this block. But if your project is public, we will need to do one extra step in order to secure our token, since anyone can view public projects. You can ignore this step if your project is private. In order to secure your token, click on Utilities in the top bar, then click Secrets. In the name text box, type Token, and in the value, Paste your Discord bot token and then click Add Secret. Then close the pop-up, go into the main category and drag in the block that says Get Secret with Name. Then where it says Secret Name, replace it with the name of your secret, which in our case is Token. Your token is now secured because no one else can view your project's secrets, even if it is public. You can create secrets for any private information and use this block to access the value of the secret anywhere in the workspace. Now we can start creating commands and features with our bot. If you want, you can click Utilities and then open the templates. This will allow you to load various pre-made templates into your workspace without making it yourself. This might be useful if you're new to Disfuse and trying to figure out how everything works. But I will show you how to make commands from scratch. To create a slash command, we need to go into the Interactions category, then click on the Slash category. Drag in the first block, which says Create Slash Commands Slash Context Menus. This block will contain all of our Slash commands. 
If you leave the test guild ID blank, it will create the slash commands in every server it is in. If you want to only have these commands on a certain server, you can enter a server ID in this text box to make these commands only register on a single server. To add a slash command, use the add slash command block and drag it into the first block. Each slash command requires a name and description. You can click the settings button on the block if you want to add more options, but these are not required. First, I will create a simple ping command which requires no additional parameters. I will also create a say command which will have one text option for the user to enter. So I will check include options and drag an option into the block from the slash category. As you can see, the blocks will show you different warning signs if it detects something wrong. If you click the warning, it will say that you need to enter a name for your option with certain requirements. Once you enter a name, this warning will go away. You should place all of your bot's commands into this one root block. Do not try to use this block twice in your project or else it will cause problems. If we try to have another one of these blocks, it will show a warning that says we can only have one of these blocks at a time. Once we have the command created, we need to go into the slash category again and use the when slash command is received block. This event block will trigger whenever any slash command on your bot is run. The first thing we need to do after a command is run is to check which command is being run. So we can go into the logic category and drag in the if block and put an equals block inside the if block. To figure out which command is being run, we can go into the slash category and access the name of the command being run. Drag this block into the equals sign and drag a text block for the text category into the other side and enter the name of the command. We can do the same thing for every other command in our bot and each command will do different things. For our ping command, I just want the bot to reply with the bot's ping. We can get the reply block from the slash category, which makes the bot reply with any text. I'm going to drag in the create text with block from the text category. This block lets you create a text with multiple blocks. The first piece will be a text block, and then I will use this block from the main category to get the bot's ping in milliseconds. You can click the settings icon to add more items to the block and finish the text. For our other command, I will make it reply with the text that the user typed in the option. To get the option value that the user entered, I can use this block from the slash category and enter the name of the option. I will also make this message only visible to the user who ran the command. Now that we have two very basic commands set up on our bot, we can export the code to start running our bot. Click the export button to download the files of your bot. You can choose to export your whole project or only the current workspace. Since we only have one workspace right now, it doesn't matter what you choose. Then click download zip. It will then convert your blocks to actual code, which you can download and run. If you open the zip file, you'll see a few files that contain the code of your project. You can open instructions.txt for a detailed guide on how to run your bot files, but I'm also going to show you one easy way to run your bot in this video. Keep in mind the instructions in the instructions.txt file might be a little outdated, so I recommend following this video instead. There are various ways to run your bot files. I recommend using a website called Wispbyte. This website provides free 24-7 hosting for your Discord bot. Click the third link in the description then click Get Started. You can create an account with your email or log in with Discord, Google, or GitHub. I will log in with my Discord account, the same way I logged into Disfuse. In the sidebar, click the Create New button to create a new server. Set a name for your server and a description if you would like. For the server type, you can remain click Free or Pay to have upgraded resources. But the free plan should be more than enough for your Discord bot. Then. Click Node.js, then click Create at the bottom. You will then be taken back to your dashboard screen. Click your server at the bottom of the page to go to the panel for your bot. You will need to wait a few minutes for your server to be set up. Once the server is created, go to the Files tab, then click Upload and Upload Manually. Select your zip file that you just downloaded from Disfuse. Once it has uploaded, Click the three dots on the side and click on Archive to extract the bot files from it. Now go over to the Console tab and click the Run button to run your bot. 
it might take a few seconds to start running. In the console, if you see a message that says your bot username is logged in, then your bot is online. It might take a few minutes for your slash commands to register on Discord, even after the bot is online. Make sure to refresh your Discord every few minutes if you still don't see your bot's slash commands. We can then test our new commands in the Discord server. The first command we created was slash ping. As you can see, this responds with the bot ping in milliseconds, just like we made it. For the second command, slash say, we can type any text for the option and the bot will repeat it back to us. And the bot's reply will also only be visible to the user who ran the command because we checked this box. So that was how to create two very basic commands for your Discord bot without any coding knowledge at all. To create more advanced commands and features, you can explore the rest of the blocks in the Disfuse toolbox or drop a suggestion down in the comments if you want to see a tutorial on how to make something in Disfuse. Let me know if you want to see more tutorials about how to create more advanced features and commands in Disfuse. If you need help on anything about Disfuse or just want to be part of the community, make sure to join the Discord server using the link in the description and create a post in the support channel. That's it for today. I hope this video helped you create your own Discord bot, and I'll see you next time.